I wanted to get into Bible school because we were talking about how we split it up into Bible schooled, Bible discipled, and um, Sunday schooled, and how Bible schooled we were going to do the five scriptures. At least I think that's the way it would work. If I look and see that it wasn't, I'm going to go back into the 13 weeks and figure that one out. And then the, I think this was the Sunday schooled because this one was a big one. And it was 13 weeks, and then we were going to go through that as a classroom setting. But using the beginning with Christ is the five basic scriptures, the five assurances. And I wanted to kind of quickly go over it and just give you a five-step approach because that's what they do. They use their hand, and they use the thumb, and they all do all this stuff. Kind of goofy things, but... I want to make a shameless plug for it, you know, that you can uh, get these free, you know, because they're on the internet. I know they're free if you look around. Um, they're scripture memory cards, and they, I don't believe in necessarily this whole big idea of memorization that a lot of people are pushing, but I do believe in some things that, you know, automatically will come to you because Holy Spirit will cause you to remember all things which are ever taught you. But I do believe that if you want to start in a pragmatic way once you get saved the first thing I would do is I wouldn't put them in John I wouldn't give them a half a Bible I'd give them a full Bible but I would put them in this immediately you know I would immediately give them these five scriptures and go through them personally with a person for five weeks meaning that meet once a week and to do that they call it the five step approach and uh, what I've decided is that in doing Bible school and using this as a lesson plan for the five steps, we're going to go through five quick ones, you know, just five tapes about beginning with Christ or beginning with Jesus, what I'm calling it. And I want to go ahead and make a shameless plug for a couple of things that I've gone through in my personal experience as a born-again Christian. When I got saved, I didn't really get followed up on. I kind of did, kind of didn't. They gave me kind of, I think they gave me a little Bible maybe and some little paper that, you know, had some questions and answers and really sucked. I mean, no offense to, you know, at the time, but it was horrible. And I remember later on, you know, in my life that when I was asked and called upon, as everybody does, you know, at some point in time, you know, to teach a Sunday school, um, I had, matter of fact, in order to go to church, I had to go like 40 miles to get there. But anyways, the point being is that I was given an assignment, you know, teach the Sunday school to fill in for somebody because, you know, they knew that I could teach and, you know, had capability and they didn't have anybody else, so they picked me. <laughs> well, they gave me a David C. Cook, you know, outline book, kind of like what, you know, we're doing this with the navigators. Well, you know, I'm recommending these, you know, like I said, you know, on 13 week doing this Bible school, but you'll see that I only use it as a format. Same thing with this, with the five weeks. I'm not going to go in order. I'm going to choose the last one first in order to teach with and to share with you, you know, what we're going to do right now on assurances and then assurance of guidance is what we're going to use, but I always use that as just kind of like what they call it, but I call it like the shortest version of the Bible condensed form that you could ever imagine. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But in my life, when I was given the task of teaching Sunday school, I was given this book that was designed for high school kids and it was by David C. Cook. And I think it was maybe junior high, I think it was. I can't even remember, but I remember it was young people. So I was given the book that was supposed to be for their age. And then I was told, because we didn't have a classroom, to go outside because, we, you know, it's kind of a weird church setting. But anyways, to go outside and on this park bench, you know, start using this book. And so I went out, you know, and I had the extra copies, and I picked it open, you know, and I looked at it. And I had all these little pictures, cartoons, and this little kind of like storyline from the Bible, sort of like a children's story Bible, sort of. And I read it and I went, and tossed it. And so I started rapping with the kids. You know, I started saying, what do you think about that? And they said, it's, it sucked. You know, I said, matter of fact, you know, it's kind of boring. I said, that's what I thought. You know, I said, I'm not going to teach this. What do you think we ought to talk about? You know, and we got to rapping, you know, we got to making a connection to relate to each other information because that's what teaching is supposed to be, relating information and my experience as a teacher to your inexperience and give you the tools so that you can go out and get the experience without learning all the pitfalls along the way and doing the wrong thing first in order to get the right thing right so you could go on with moving on in life so that way you wouldn't have to learn it the hard way. That's what teaching is about. So when I had that book, you know, I, I, I know David Cook is like, you know, highly recommended and everybody uses it and all these churches are wonderful with it and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't. I thought it sucked because I came from this other place where we didn't use that, I don't know, because I didn't teach there. But anyways, I didn't think they did. 
So I thought that sucked. So later, after the service, you know, the pastor came around the corner, you know, with his wife, you know, and he comes walking up to me and, you know, was kind of like real happy because, you know, he saw, you know, that I was still there <laughs> in one piece. And he said, well, the kids sound like, uh, you know, they really enjoyed your class, Michael. And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, what did you think of the material? I told him straight, I looked him right in the eye, I said, it sucked. I said, I didn't use it. And he was like, <laughs> and his wife just about lost it completely, laughing. She thought it was hilarious that somebody would actually tell the truth about what they thought because the pastor had always been told all these other things because people were always saying this about what the Sunday school should do this and they should do that. And so he was always having this problem. So finally, I just told him, I said, that sucked. So I didn't use it. So fortunately, the next week, you know, the teacher was back and they were back to, I guess, David C. Cook stuff and blah, blah, blah. Well, right about that time, you know, I was, you know, pretty mad about the David C. Cook stuff, and I was pretty mad about, you know, the church using this kind of garbage that I thought, you know, was so childish and stupid that it didn't fit these kids, you know, where they were at. About the next week, right around that week, this couple called Lynn and Reed showed up, and they were from Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa, and they had been involved in Calvary's Sunday School Ministry. They came up and completely revolutionized the entire ministry there at the church. And, uh, you know, best friends for a long time until one of them passed away, you know, a long time. I ended up leaving and going to New Mexico and all kinds of things. But the point is, while they were there, you could tell the difference between what was anointed and what was opportunity. Sure, there's an opportunity to use certain materials, but what's anointed is when a person comes in fully trained, educated, and knows what works and what doesn't work with kids, and they're qualified in that ministry that they're schooled and trained to do. And when Lynn and Reed came in, they did salty, and they did lots of innovative materials, using David Cook's material, but also other things too, and incorporated it and involved the children. And that Sunday school ministry was like hot, on fire. People were like loving it. They were digging it. I mean, even the adults were getting jealous. <laughs> and that's the way it should be, anyways. So it was kind of cool, you know, because Lynn and Reed were anointed, and whatever they did in that children's ministry always worked. That's kind of what I'm trying to tell you. Anointed, the five scriptures. I can't tell you about the 13 weeks, you know. God help us what we're going to do there. But in the five scriptures, it's anointed. It is appointed by God, these particular scriptures, for whatever reason, they work. So I would use these, but I don't use it necessarily in the same format that, you know, this is designed. So always be free for the Holy Spirit to work with you and you to work with the Holy Spirit cooperatively, not dictating to Him, so that He can lead you into the way you need to design it, particularly for your children or for yourself or for your adults or for your wife or your spouse or your husband or whoever it may be that you're going to disciple with to share and communicate on a one-to-one -one basis. Because it's not about dictating to someone and telling them what to do. So anyways, in this, I would say go out and get one of these. You know, it's Beginning with Christ, Navigator's Press, five weeks, five fingers, five memorizations. You're going to learn five scriptures in five weeks, so I want you to start memorizing. And if you want to, if you don't want to remember the numbers right now on this tape series, I don't care. I don't do addresses, so I don't care about it. But the first one we're going to memorize is called Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's actually in this book called Assurance of Salvation, or actually Assurance of Guidance. And it's one that I live by all my life. It's something that I believe is the most important scripture for a Christian to grab a hold of as soon as they get saved. Oh, for God so loved the world, it's beautiful, you know, and it tells you about, you know, God loving the world, but this one tells you how to live your life. So I would say this is the most important scripture that you'll probably learn after whatever scripture you think is the most important. So for me, this is number one, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So. In Bible schooled, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And one of the things that you should do every time that you take one of these is that, first of all, you begin to open it up and you see that there's already the materials inside. They can break it out and take it. I recommend this for one reason. It's short, it's cute, it's put together in a package, and that's what people want. They want things in a cute little setting that they can carry around, slip in their pocket. They want something simple. They want something easy to use. They want something that they don't have to have 
a big old notebook and a big old long thing until they get involved in Bible school like the 13 week process. So keep it small, keep it short, keep it simple and you know you could use the word keep it simple stupid if you want to from the KISS thing but that's just a colloquialism. I don't believe in that. I believe that we should make it as hard as possible really for everybody to understand because Jesus did when it came to following him because every time that he said something nobody understood what he was saying. I'm kidding. <laughs> But, you know, once you kind of get involved in this, it's like, hey, don't patronize people. Be real with them. Say, look, we're memorizing. Get with it. So you sing it. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Wa -da 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 -da. You break it up into pieces for memorization. Always. You don't just take it. So you go, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. They say that repetition breeds memorization. And the Catholics prove that all you got to do is just keep memorizing it. They had one of the best Sunday schools around. They had one of the best education process around because they did it by what's called rote, R-O-T-E, or W-R-O-T-E, I'm not sure which. But it means memorization by repetition. Just memorize it by doing it over and over again. So seven times in a row, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not, uh, whoops, just the first part. Trust in the Lord. Trust in, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> I can't stop it. Okay. Trust in the Lord, 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 trust in the Lord. Then you add the next part. But you put it together with the other part. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. 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 Why seven? Seven's number completion, seven, seven days in the week, seven is seven scales. When you begin something new, you go on the eighth part. That's why you do it. Okay, got it? Good, good. Let's move on. And I'm not just wound up on coffee. I'm trying to get through this because it should be simple. It should be smart. It should be intelligent. It should be quick. <laughs> in other words, don't make it into a theological thing. It's just do it. Trust in the Lord with the now into the third part. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. You could wrap it if you want to, and that'd be great. See, that's the whole point. So you have seven times of each part. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. One more. That's all we got to do. Eighth time. Or next part, seven times. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Hey, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Hey, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Hey, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You see, Broadway musicals are all based upon one simple premise. They all pretty much sound sort of like. So if you get a rhythm, you can do it to pretty much everything and rap can do the same thing. So it's pretty much in scriptures, a lot of things are already rhythmic. So you can play with it with songs, use humor, laughter, carry on. Now that you got it memorized, then you begin to get into talking about it. And that's what inspired me today to share with you that I'm going to go ahead and design write, coordinate, and put out for Bible school after these first five. We may take a gap while I write it. But I'm going to put out and publish on PDF so you can copy it and then you could cut it up and if you look like these, you can staple them together so you have a little stapler, you know, and you just 
but I'm going to put together a series so that you can go Bible disciple. You know, is that you can disciple somebody through the basics using what's what I call um, item specific theology, meaning that the Bible says what it means, it means what it says. You take a person, they open it up, they look at the scripture, it asks questions about the scriptures, it uses the same scripture right there in context to answer itself. That's item specific discipleship. So we're going to use this whole concept of item specific, IS, it is what it is, the way it is, where it is, as it is, to show you a means of examining the scripture and discipling a person so that you'll get into the idea of reading comprehension without having to get into some kind of weird, you know, long brainwashing or rewashing or refiguring out your own mindset because you've been brainwashed. So in that way, I think people are going to be benefited and blessed because sure, I could put it together and try to make some money and get into this, that, and the other thing, but it's better that you have some materials because it's not that the end of the world is coming so soon, although it is. And it's not like Jesus is coming right away, although he is, but not in 2012. But it's like, let's get on with it, right? Let's use the best things that God has anointed and qualified people with a certain anointing so that we can make disciples of all nations. And the way that you do that is you would ask questions, just like in this trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Who do you trust? You would answer trust in the Lord. You don't answer trust in Jesus. You don't answer trust in God. You answer what the scripture says. So when a person asks you, what do you trust in? You say you trust in the Lord. Because then they say, well, where's that? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Because you automatically know where it is because you memorized it. That's what you answer. Is scripture answers scripture. Or if you want to put it this way, Jesus answered Jesus. If you have a question about the Word of God, Jesus is the Word of God, so the Word of God answers for Jesus, or Jesus answers. So if you're using the Word of God to answer a question, then you're answering with how Jesus would speak. He would say, have you not heard? Is it not written? And then he would say it. And that's the point. You are exemplifying what Jesus does. But you always answer scripture or scriptural questions with scripture, not with your interpretation, not with your changing, not with a different word, but with the word, the way it's written. That's item-specific theology. It's also called, well, item-specific or um, instance, inst instance specification. Or, yeah, I think it's item specification or instance specification. But anyways, I want to write that material, put it together, throw it out there, and it'll be out there for people to use, and they can download it and, you know, copy it, cut it up, and use it. Because, after all, you know, it's kind of stupid to use some things that are just going to, like, take you into theology without taking you into relationship. But you'll always have, in item-specific things, a relationship because it always points to Jesus. So we're going to make it simple. So now, that's how you would do the first one. So you ask them, who do you trust in? I trust in the Lord. Really? Because if a person says, I trust in God, then you know that, yeah, they're making up something and they're adding to or taking from the scripture. So you don't want to do that. You always want them to answer with the scripture. And you mention that right off the bat. That way it gets them looking at the scripture and make sure they look at it. Because if a person says, I trust in God, you say, oh, cool. And then you look at it first and then you tell them, well, what's it say here? As you're looking down at it, you're giving them an example to follow so that they will follow your lead, and then they'll look down at it too, and it says, oh, that's right, trust in the Lord. And then you say, what do you trust in the Lord with? And you go, oh, well, I, because they're looking down, and you keep looking down at your scripture when you're asking the questions, and they'll look at the scripture, and then they'll realize what the answer is, because they'll say, well, I trust in God with, with my life. Well, that's not the answer. You see, you look at the scripture, and you say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So, yes, the heart technically means something like that, but you don't let that go because that's when deception, perception, inception of the error comes in like Eve did with Satan, and that's how Satan tripped her up. She quoted back to Satan something God did not say, so then he asked her, well, hath God said that? And in reality, no, he hadn't. And he knew it, but she didn't. So you always want to use the scripture in the way that it's written, the way it's written, with whichever one you're using. Because if you're using NIV or something, well then use it in that context. But I'd rather, you know, for me, use King James. So you say, you know, trust in the, well, I'm looking at freaking a witch, I'm looking at NIV instead of King James. But. So you say that, who do you trust in, what do you trust in the Lord with? Um, 
whose understanding do you use? You know, I mean, you can invent the questions just so that you make sure that you answer back to you lean not into your own understanding. Should you lean into your own understanding, or should you, in other words, always use the same words too? Should you ever use your own understanding? No. It says lean not into thine own understanding, because you're told to trust in the Lord, not your own understanding. See how that works? In all thy ways acknowledge Him. What should you acknowledge? What do you think acknowledgement means? You know, in other words, you can ask questions that also don't answer specifically, but pretty much I would stick with just answering the questions as they are when you started it up. And he shall direct thy path. Who directs your path? You or him? You know, in other words, you don't ask you or him, but you say, who directs your path? He shall direct thy path. And then once you get the right answer, then you can reinforce by saying, well now, we're not going to ask you to answer with the scriptures, but what do you think, let's get a little more deep without answering with the scriptures. Who is the Lord here? You know, what is your heart? What is your own understanding? You know, what do you think understanding means? I mean, you could get into the in-depth of it and you can adapt it as you choose. But that first two parts should be there. Memorize it, repeat it seven times together, all together. You should do it as a group because then you become one in the Spirit, one in the Lord. You're all saying it with one voice. Make sure everybody's talking out loud. Make sure everybody's saying it out loud. Repeat it after me. Repeat after me. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, be not thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, be not thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. In other words, you know, you can do what you want. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, be not thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord. You know, in other words, you can do what you want. But the point is, get everyone doing it all at the same time. You can, you know, showboat if you want to at one point but make sure you do it collectively together. And always do that cooperatively, getting everyone to work together as a team. When you do, even if it's just two, then you've got where two or more are gathered there, I'm in the midst, and if you are in unity, then you are one in the Spirit, one in the Lord. And it brings about a whole accomplishment of what God wants to do, besides just memorizing some foolish Christians theology that you think that you got to do it this way and only that way and you don't realize that all kinds of other things are happening at the same time like love discipleship teaching unity in the spirit um, ministering to one another um, encouraging one another gift of exhortation gift of word of wisdom word of knowledge um, all kinds of things are going on so take the five this is what the first one was so you understand it you can replay it if it went too fast for you just go ahead and go back in rewind play, rewind, play, rewind, play. Or you've got the idea so you can run with it and go with it. So just get Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Get the little booklet so the person has it themselves and you know that you're on the same page because if you're taking pieces and trying to make it work for someone else, they'll bring in their pieces. But if you honestly care about someone, you would go out and if you have five people, you buy five of these. If you have four people, you buy four of these and you give them one. I would keep an extra because, <laughs> eh, you know, I know how it goes. But you would give them one and you might even autograph it or put their name on it or something, you know, to make it personal. But the point is, take it from God and the Holy Spirit to go with Him where you would go with these in beginning with Jesus. Because Jesus was personal to His disciples and He answered them specifically, each and every one of them, one on one. And that's what you should be, one on one with the five scriptures of the assurances as well as the assurance of guidance which we just started which is going to be our number one even though it's number five in here so in my personal opinion there are all the other assurances which are on your fingers but the number one thumbs up is trust in the Lord with all thy heart and not thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path and you got it that's my thumb thumbs up for that one that's right by golly we got it dude trust in the Lord <laughs> so do it it's simple. Be it. Live it. It's encouraging. They'll love you for it. They'll thank you one day. Just be a fool for Christ. And guess what? You'll confound the wise. <laughs>